This video is about how to do spatial econometrics models in the R software. Before you watch this, please make sure you watch the lecture and example that I have posted on my website. Here I have opened up the R Studio uh, to execute the R programs. So on, on this side I have my program which you can download from the website and here are the results. I've already run the whole program, highlighted and run the whole program, so we're ready to go. Uh, the first thing to do before you begin is to install the package's um, uh, spatial dependence package. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. You could like either remove this and then run this line of code to install this or you can go from here where it says packages and then install packages and you can look for this package and then click install uh, so make sure you do that first okay uh, then once you've installed the package then you have to run the library sp uh, dependent and once you run this then you're going to see loading the packages and we're ready to go um, we will use for that data Columbus and it's already part of the package so that you don't have to download or find the data. Once you've installed that package it will be part of the memory. Uh, so all you do is just data Columbus and it will be uh, in the memory at, at that point. Okay, so my data, uh, Columbus we will call my data and then you have to attach my data then our dependent variable would be crime and income and home values would be our independent variable so we're doing spatial econometrics models uh, and then we will bind the x and y coordinates into uh, x and y uh, a new variable this is for the coordinates and we would also have um, for neighbors, we would be using this file that also came with the data with the data set that uh, points to where these observations are and what's the uh, um, distance uh, between them. And finally, for coordinates, we will basically be using the coordinates. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the workspace. This is what we have in terms of the data and uh, we can go ahead and look at the Columbus data. Okay, so this is the data set that we have. Uh, the dependent variable would be crime, and these are the values that we have. Home values and income would be our independent variables. Okay, and the next thing that we would use is X and Y. These are now not the X and Y variables as we typically think of them. These are the coordinates. So in a sense, it's really bad because I'm also using X and Y for the dependent and independent variables. So there's a big confusion. But these are coordinates here. So this is the data set that we have. And there are basically uh, 49 observations uh, that we would be um, using. Okay, so let's go back to the program. Now that we have defined our... Um, uh, our file with who the neighbors are, we know what the coordinates are, and we know our x and y. Let's begin. The first thing that we would do is we would summarize um, the neighbors. Okay? And I have executed the whole program, and this is what the output is for this code that we have here. Uh, so we have number of regions 49, number of non zero links, percentage of non zero weights. Uh, so we have a little bit more information here on who the neighbors are and what their relationship is. If you want to summarize X and Y, this is crime, This is the mean is 35, uh, 14 for income, and 38 for home values. Next thing that we can do is we can estimate an OLS regression and get the summaries of that. And uh, here's the uh, the variables, basically higher income and higher home values, would lead to lower crime. Okay, so here's where the interesting part begins. 
we will be doing spatial analysis based on contiguity. Um, the first thing to do is define the spatial weight matrix and this is done with this command nb2 list w and you have to give it a file that came with your data set of the neighbors and then you can summarize that. So once we execute this code, it's right here. Um, this is the summary that we have and we already have uh, this uh, list w uh, is already generated uh, generated for us. Uh, that would be our spatial weight matrix based on contiguity. The next thing that we can do is the Moranzai test. Um, we have crime as the dependent variable. You have to also give it the name of the matrix. Um, so we would have, uh, this is the test statistic that we have here. And the p-value is very small, less than 0.05, therefore we have spatial dependence. So another thing that you can do is you can plot uh, the Moran's i. And if I run that, this is what we have as a uh, output. So we have crime on this line and spatially legged crime here, which means this is the W, the spatial weight matrix times the crime. So the 45 degree line is uh, what we have as the perfect prediction. So we see that we don't have perfect prediction, but it's pretty good. So if this is the actual value of say 28 uh, for, for crime, it's probably predicted as like 26 or something like that. Uh, using the spatially lagged values. So we have a, a, a relatively good, good prediction. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the program that we have. So let me find where... Okay, so we were right here. The next thing to do is uh, look at the spatial... look at the Lagrange multiplier test for spatial lag and spatial error dependencies. And the results that we have are here and again looking at the p-values looks like we do have uh, spatial dependence okay so we need to be using um, both the spatial lag and the spatial error model there's justification for that the next thing that we can do is um, uh, go ahead and estimate a spatial lag model and this is done with lag uh, spatial autoregressive linear model. You put the dependent variable here, independent variables here, this is the data, and this is the spatial weight matrix, and then you use the summary. And here's the summary for that. So we have negative effect of income and home values on the dependent variable, and we also have rho, the spatial dependence parameter, which is significant. So that's, that's a good thing when estimating a spatial lag model. The next thing that we can do is uh, estimate a spatial error model. And this is done instead of just using lag, by using error, a spatial autoregressive auto linear model. And again, everything else is the same as before. And then you go ahead and summarize that. And uh, we have the results here. Again, we have negative effects of income and home values on, on crime rate. And the other thing to report from here is lambda, the parameter, and to observe that it's significant in our case. So this was how to do spatial analysis based on contiguity. The rest of the analysis is how to do spatial analysis based on distance. Okay, so the first thing that we're doing here is um, to calculate the spatial weight matrix based on distance and you need to give it lower and upper bounds. So X and Y are the coordinates that came with the data set. D1 equals 0 is the lower bound and 10 is the upper bound. Um, and so we're basically giving it an, an upper bound of, of, of 10. This is the distance after which it won't matter, uh, you will not be considered neighbors anymore. And we would be using the same NB2 list W to generate the matrix. Uh, NB, uh, that's how we would, we would 
uh, call it and style equals w so this is kind of like part of what this command requires okay so once we've generated that we can summarize it and and take a look at uh, the number of regions number of non-zero links and so on and you can um, you can just see a little bit more statistics on that so the next thing to do is we can again examine the Moran's eye test uh, and that's done by using moran.test you put the dependent variable here and the the um, the new weight matrix that we have and again this is the test statistics that we have and again we see that it's significant so we're justified in using the um, spatial uh, models and if we want to plot this I'm just going to highlight and run this part to see the figure we see something very similar to what we had uh, before in terms of uh, the dependent variable and the spatially lagged variable here Okay, so going back, uh, the final few things that we would do uh, is um, to look at the Lagrange multiplier. Uh, so we can we can see if there is a spatial lag dependencies and spatial error dependencies. So in this case, we would see that there is just a well there this is only marginally significant at the at the ten percent but not at the five percent and there is no this one is not significant for the spatial error model so again if you use distance ba distance matrix i'm sorry if you use spatial weight matrix based on contiguity as we did before there is support for using that but if we use distance, there's no longer support for using these models. So when you estimate the spatial lag model, and again, you can see that everything is the same, only that we would be reading this new weight matrix that we just generated here, and I called it the same thing, but it's a, it's a different spatial weight matrix. And same thing for the error model, we would be using the weight matrix based on this uh, distance. So let's look at these results. Here are the results for the spatial lag model. We have negative influences, but if you look at the row, the spatial dependence parameter, we see that that is no longer significant. So not only that the use of these models are unjustified based on distance, but these models, the parameters are not significant. And again, if you look at the spatial error model, again, we have negative influences here, but lambda, the spatial dependence parameter, is again not significant in this case. So um, again, this was how to do spatial analysis based on distance weight matrix, and we find that the results are not significant for the spatial uh, parameters. Okay, so thanks for watching. This was how to do spatial econometrics models in R.